Welcome, welcome everybody. I'm the Air Quotes Comedian and this is the Polemics Podcast. Welcome. So, I was at that Staples store the other day and after walking around Staples, I approached one of the cashiers and I said, I've looked all around the store and I can't find any bread, milk, sugar or potatoes. Could you check in the back for me? The cashier looked confused momentarily and then, stony-faced, she said, Oh, I see. What are you? Some kind of comedian? I said, I'm not a comedian. I just had delusions about being a comedian. That wasn't comedy. It just had a delusion about being comedy. What I said wasn't funny. It just had a delusion about being funny. They say you should attack the idea and not the person. I have a different opinion though. I'm quite happy to attack the idea, the person, the opposing idea and the people promulgating it. And the person serving light refreshments for everybody concerned. The dog of the person serving light refreshments. Myself, you and, of course, your mum. It's the carpet bombing approach to the art of insulting. Why people feel the need to bomb carpets, I don't know. But my munition of choice is an alliterative platform ending in a naughty word. Cunt, usually. It's not particularly clever or even original. And a question I have to ask myself is, is it environmentally sustainable? Or should I look for insults that are a little more eco-friendly? Sometimes I use the comparison method. For example, Boris Johnson has the intellect and moral fibre of an athlete's foot infection on the foot of a racist athlete. But even that is growing old and stale, much like Boris Johnson's face. I did consult the internet about how to construct a good insult, but... As usual, the great oracle and fount of all human bigotry was bloody useless. It seems as though if I want to construct and utilise a better class of insult, then I'll have to think of one of my own. And, as you may have noticed, thinking is not really my forte. In one article I read, it advised that you have to find a weak spot in your enemy that the enemy perceives as a weak spot too. For instance, pointing out that a rich businessman is greedy is no good because the rich businessman sees being greedy as a positive. Really, I don't know what to make of that information because half the time the insults I make aren't for the benefit of the people I'm insulting. They're for the audience. You know, if I had an audience, which I definitely don't and never will have on account of being a bit shit. One type of insult I quite like is the long-winded stream of derogatory attributes said in one breath. You know, the type that sometimes begins with, they're a knuckle-dragging, and then goes on and on, and ends with an expletive or some such. For example, Boris Johnson is a knuckle-dragging, pig-shagging, micro-brained, hair-untamed, politically bankrupt, totally corrupt, beady-eyed, dead-inside, inept, no-necked, fumbling, bumbling, grumbling, mumbling bastard. Please remember, that was just an example, because, of course, I don't necessarily believe that Boris Johnson has a brain at all, micro-sized or otherwise. They say, in comedy, you should always punch up. I've never seen the logic in that sentiment, and as such, I'll punch up, down, and sideways if I damned well want. I mean, how can I insult neo-Nazis if I'm prohibited from punching down? And it is punching down, right? No, it is, because it's generally frowned upon to mock the cognitively impaired. I was reading an article on the Vice website. Don't judge me. In the article, the case they made was that women could call anybody a cunt, but men should avoid calling women cunts, which is obviously advice that I have not or ever will follow, because when I use the term cunt, I'm not using it as a tool of misogyny. I'm using it because it is supposedly the most offensive word in the English language. It really isn't, though. 
It's a blunt one syllable with a nice clicking sound at the beginning and the end, and you can really spit it out like venom, which is why I like using it so much. All of which demonstrates that as well as being morally shady, what with the poor treatment of their female employees in the past, Vice really doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Cunts. They say you shouldn't insult a person's physical characteristics. Yeah, it's a bit tricky that one. I mean, people largely can't help how they look. Having said that, things like spray-on tans that look orange, or a comb-over so egregiously bad as to completely fail to deny the reality of boldness, or the fact that this hypothetical ex-president of the USA is a tubby tosser because he exists on an exclusive diet of hamburgers, burnt steaks smothered in ketchup, and sugary sodas made with the tears of immigrant babies is, in fact, fair game to be mocked in that manner. They say, don't they, that you shouldn't take the piss out of people's religious beliefs. <laughs> oh, really? I think that rather depends on the context, doesn't it? I think all religion is stupid, and that all religious people are stupid. Mind you, while I feel totally free to mock Christianity, Scientology, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, I wouldn't mock followers of Islam. You might think that's a little hypocritical, but you'd be mistaken. I'm based in the USA, and the Jehovah Mormon Christian Scientology complex is largely comprised of the ruling class, isn't it? Whereas Muslims in the USA are a minority, and I refuse to contribute in any way furthering the oppression of a marginalised group, even if they are fucking morons for not being atheist. If I feel the need to mock Islam right, then I'd go to Saudi Arabia and do it there, because I'm sure that they'd all laugh along with me while I roasted their belief system, and that nothing bad would happen to me in any way whatsoever. Well, I'd made precisely fuck all progress in crafting a new paradigm for creating insults. I really wish I wasn't as dumb and stupid as I am, or as a much smarter person than I once put it, intelligent adjacent. One type of insult I particularly enjoy and use quite often is the one that ends with that vaguely resembles a human. So, if I wanted to insult Joe Biden, for example, and I very much do want to do that because he's a vile vomit stain, I might say, Joe Biden is a collection of rotting roadkill infested with maggots contained within a wizened leathery skin sack that is shaped to resemble something vaguely human. I would add that that is pretty offensive to maggots, but what are they going to do about it? Turn into flies, traipse on turds and then walk all over my food? Oh yeah, they could actually do it. See? Intelligent adjacent. I like internet comment boards, right? But sometimes I forget that sarcasm and irony are poorly intuited, which is a fucking shame, really, because if more people had a sense of humour, they might brush it off. And if you had any sense at all, you'll realise I'm full of shit. But the internet comments section, that's what it's called. Type that into the browser of your choice and slap a .com on the end. The internet comments section, where irony and sarcasm are often poorly received, said that already, but you might have forgotten. Perhaps you've got Alzheimer's early on set. Phew, worse than a David Cronenberg movie, that shit. But internet comments section is one area of the internet I like to use for, you know, posting comments. The original post isn't important, and I'll let you... Dearest viewer, mmm, tasty. I'll let you, dear viewer, discern for yourself my malicious intent. My intent, even. The exchange went thusly. Me. That was crap. Open bracket. Irony. Look it up. Close bracket. Open bracket. That last statement was also ironic, because you, O.P., don't need to look it up on account of how smart you are. Close bracket. Open bracket. No, it might not be what you think. It's exactly what you think, you clever listener. Close bracket. Open bracket.
the last two statements were false. Close bracket. Open bracket. I am really stoned. Close bracket. I've been thinking of being a tad more creative with my insults of late. For example, I was having a debate with my missus the other day that went something like this. Her views on catastrophic climate change were that it was a part of God's plan and that we should do precisely bugger all to prevent such. I asked my wife how she felt about the generations to follow. She kind of shrugged. I said, well, I take an entirely different view on the matter, I have to say. Firstly, what kind of God would allow the destruction of the earth to commence and continue while further generations are born and whose future is ultimately futile? If that is the God we're stuck with, darling, then I'm afraid I'm going to have to tell him to fuck right off. Some scientists speculate that we've already passed the point of no return. I remain optimistic that that's not the case and so, while renewable energy is not without its own problems, I hope humanity can claw us back from the brink of the lunacy, but I'm not so optimistic about that happening. She countered with some argument about being too set in her ways and upon finishing, I summed up both our arguments and then said, So, let's imagine your God is looking down upon us. Perhaps he's sitting upon a fluffy cloud and he sees us, you and me, my missus, and I wonder to myself what he sees. Well, I'll tell you. He sees you, my missus, and he sees your frankly shocking view of your regard for the future of humanity and your unwillingness to even acknowledge that renewables are our best shot at some semblance of the future, and lo, the good Lord turns his gaze to Patrick, the Holy One, whose sense of empathy, decency and humanity shine out like a beacon to the saints, who believes that even though the bell may have told, it is still worthwhile to fight for the future of humankind. But you, my missus, it's off to hellfire for all eternity for you and spiders. All right, I would have said all that if I'd the wit to do that kind of thing contemporaneously, but I don't. What I actually said to my wife's initial argument was, Oh, fuck off, poopy face. I have a couple more small bits to trudge through. Not really about insults or anything, but seeing as this episode is already running long, I may as well dump them here. The unfortunate women is the first bit, and then the car passenger dog will wrap things up. I knew this woman who had been raised in Palestine, whose parents and three-year-old brother were murdered by Israeli snipers and she herself was imprisoned and persecuted by the Israeli government. Upon being released from the prison, she was promptly kidnapped and ushered into a sex trafficking ring where she was forced into heroin addiction while doing the most unspeakable, depraved acts for her abusers. Somehow, she managed to escape and fled Occupy Palestine to Great Britain, where I met her at a welfare office, because she needed extra money to cover a cancer treatment or something. I said to that lady after listening to her woes, Well, you think you've had it tough. I had to loosen the lid on a jar of pickles last week. I was sitting in the veterinarian's office to get my shots. I saw a truck driving in, the passenger window was open and this dog's head was sticking out. The guy came in with the dog a few moments later and when they sat down I leaned over and I asked him, I see you let your dog stick his head out of the window. Is that really wise? I mean, if he was clipped by a telegraph pole, he could be decapitated, hereditary style. And then where do you be? In a world where your beloved pet had had his head ripped off. That's where. I mean, you driving with your window down and your dog loose on the passenger seat, what if a rock, a mythical flappy bird, what if a rock was flying overhead and saw your dog's head poking out of the window, it would swoop down and grab your dog's head so fast it would tear it clean off, and then where'd you be, eh? 
in a world where your beloved pet had had his head ripped off by a mythical flappy beast. That's where. What if? You're driving with your window down through Hounslow and Fido is sticking his head through the window and suddenly your dog is spotted by the Hounslow Women's Association Dog Sex Trafficking Division and they see your dog and suddenly there's a motorcycle by your passenger door as you're going along and whammo! Your dog is snatched right through that open window. Okay, so the dog still has his head in that scenario but still all that having happened where would your dog be then well i'll tell you fucking an endless series of willing bitches having the time of his life probably i wish i was a dog